Hey everyone, it's me, Ben, or GNC Centric, and today I'm doing a video as a response to a response video by Ariel Sorcella. So if you don't know who Ariel Sorcella is, she is a lesbian YouTuber who considers herself to be a trans ally, but is critical of trans extremists. The video that she's responding to is made by a group of four women who are the Peak Resilience Project. So they are all detransitioned or desisted women, which means they either identified as trans or socially transitioned or medically transitioned, um, and they experienced dysphoria, and then now they either have desisted, which means they've stopped experiencing dysphoria, or they've detransitioned because they've found other ways to handle their dysphoria. They are very thoughtful. I find their work to be very important. They're very considerate people who deserve respect. So honestly, Ariel's video pissed me off because she markets herself as an LGBT educator when it's obvious from this video that not only does she not know anything about the science of transsexuality, as in she doesn't know the taxonomy of transsexuality or gender dysphoria, um, it's also obvious that she's never read an article by or about detransition, she's never read a detransitioner's blog, it's obvious she has never watched YouTube videos by detransition people. Her tone is so condescending when she has so little knowledge. Meanwhile, these four women have a wealth of experience to draw on and they've done a lot of research and work into what they're talking about. It's just ridiculous to me that she doesn't know what she's talking about and her video has over a hundred thousand views right now. Anyway, let's get started. Top tier of fetishizing gay men is becoming one. Good morning babes and babe lovers. Today I am back with my favorite gay boy of Florida. One of my favorite gays in general. Storm Ryan, his boyfriend's in the corner eating pasta. That's literally <laughs> me. I'd just like to note that Storm Ryan and his boyfriend are both female to male transsexuals. So they are both born female, but they call themselves gay men, and Ariel calls them gay men. Eating pasta. That's literally <laughs> me 24-7 besides when I'm filming. Detransitioning is what we're talking about. We found a YouTube channel, and I'm assuming they were all lesbians that thought they were trans men, and started to transition and then realized they weren't. Welcome to the very first ever Detransitioner Q&A. My name is Helena. I identified as trans since I was 15 to about 19. Blake and I did a video about this, and we talked about the age range of people that are detransitioners. They transition from age 15 to 19, and then they realize they're not trans. It's a thing. So I think there are two reasons why we are seeing this age group of people transitioning and detransitioning. So a major part of it is social media and the social contagion. So it's just become so acceptable and so popular and so praised and so cool that a lot of young people get really swept up in it unintentionally and a lot of especially females who have body image issues or sexuality issues or issues fitting in they're given this kind of if you're trans this is how you fix things and your life will be better so they could see themselves being that person very easily and then they're not really going to proper therapy or if they are it's just a gender therapist who says, oh yes, you're trans, go get hormones. And then the second factor is informed consent. Informed consent. Where the major thing that they emphasize is that your features are going to be masculinized permanently. But there's less emphasis and less discussion or even mention of the fact that if you're on testosterone for more than this many years, there's a chance that your uterus will atrophy or you'll develop uterine fibroids or something and you'll need your uterus removed. They don't um, have full discussions explaining how osteoporosis progresses and what its long-term effects are. They don't explain the increased chances of stroke and increased chances of cancer, stuff like that. So anyway, any teenager can go to the doctor even if they haven't lived as trans. Oh, they'll just say I identified as trans or they'll say I've lived as trans for this long and I want hormones and the doctor usually will say oh, okay fine sign the informed consent and I'll give it to you and what this means is that there's tons of teenagers who've never had therapy who've never really looked at their issues clearly 
who are taking steps to permanently change their body. So they may be experiencing real dysphoria, but just waves of them are having easy access to hormones and they're being told that if they don't do hormones as teenagers, their bodies will be permanently changed. So there's like a rush to get hormones. There's the entire concept of the earlier you get hormones, the better you'll pass. So you need to get hormones as soon as possible, even if you're not 100% sure you're trans. Because the alternative is that you'll have to live with your other characteristics. Um, so what's happening is a generation of teenagers are diagnosing themselves as having dysphoria and being trans and taking the steps to transition and being completely affirmed by their entire social group when it's possible one, that they have dysphoria that might dissipate as they grow, or two, that they don't have dysphoria, that they have other issues that are compounding dysmorphia or issues with their sexuality that might be interpreted as dysphoria but could be treated in other ways. And they're all just being affirmed and taking hormones. Also, just to note that Ariel's definition of trans is somebody who was born with the wrong body for their brain so she believes it's innate and unchangeable and like destiny as in the true transsexual so she believes anybody who transitions and doesn't find relief from transition was never really trans to begin with or never experienced real dysphoria or was just confused um which is a super simplistic way of looking at a, a, such an abstract concept it's a thing, so this is definitely true already. My name's Jesse. I'm 20. Um, I identified as trans, both non-binary, um, migrating to a trans guy from ages like 15 to 19. Um, and I was on testosterone for a year and a month, so from age 18 to the beginning of my 19-year-old year. That's so sad that she was on testosterone, because like I straight up thought those two in the middle were assigned male at birth. Really? Yes, I did. You 100%. thought they were trans women? Yeah, I thought. No, they were, I think like, these. I think these are all. I think. Now I want to. <laughs> Doesn't, isn't wow. that so sad? Like, I don't really have anything specific to say except that this whole like sensationalizing pity party is disgusting. What the fuck? And also, they don't look male. The range of what looks like a female is pretty freaking huge. I don't know what the fuck they're saying. Um, like, uh, they, like, they look, they look no, like I men. think, I yeah. think these are all women that just yeah, thought that they assigned, were trans. Assigned female at birth. Yeah, that yeah. thought yeah. they were trans like, and they're not. They, if transition is all about self-ID and self-interpretation, what the hell is the difference between somebody who thinks they're trans and somebody who is trans? Persistence over time? That's ridiculous. Like, I know people who transitioned for 10 years and lived for 10 years as trans men and then detransitioned. There's no difference between somebody who thinks they're trans and somebody who is trans. That's what it means to be trans. But they were trans like, and they're not. They were on testosterone, I don't think they were. But they I, think, I, were. I think you're right, actually, because I remember watching a clip of this in somebody else's video and I think this person never started tea. Let's see what it says, though. We're Helena, Jesse, Dagny, and Chiara, and we're answering a few question questions about detransitioners and desisters. What the hell is that? Personal a desister is somebody who experienced the symptoms of gender dysphoria and then eventually stops experiencing them. Again, I don't know how you can call yourself an educator when you don't even know like the basic terminology used for this conversation. It's ridiculous. Literally, if you like open a Wikipedia page about detransition, I bet that word is on there. What the hell is that? Personal stories and opinions of women who identified as trans and then decided, you know, basically that this isn't them. Okay. Oh, Calvin commented. I didn't even see that he commented. Look at that, a month ago. Calvin said, very insightful. Unfortunately, nowadays it's been very trendy to be trans and because of it, I guarantee in the next five to 10 years, we'll have so many more detransition stories. Accurate, this is why I love Calvin. Of course, he would comment something like that. Cause he's I find it pretty rich that she's praising Calvin Gara for making uh, an accurate comment, but the women in the video are making the same point with much more nuance and detail, but you're praising him because he's in- he is actually currently trans and these people are not trans. It's so transparent that Ariel is conforming to an ideology. Uh, my name is Dagny, I'm 22 now, and from age 15 to age 19, I identified, yeah, first as non-binary and then later as a trans man. The voice for me is, is one of the main things, and your facial shape. Yeah. It's not something that really goes back, especially the voice. 
So I'm just going to quickly go over some of the things about the female body that become masculinized on testosterone. So first thing, voice deepens. That is irreversible. Second thing, facial hair. If you grow facial hair, you either will have to shave for the rest of your life if you detransition or get electrolysis. I've known a few women who've done that. Um, the redistribution of fat and muscle, that is reversible, but not completely, from what I've heard. Uh, thickening of body hair, uh, that reverses, but not completely, from what I've heard. And then clitoral growth, obviously, it doesn't shrink. I'm sure there's some stuff I missed, but again, they are completely uneducated and they're just guessing. It's not yeah, gonna go back. Also, like, just the way I gender people, it's like, if you sound male, look male, like, it just comes out my mouth. So if I say he anytime- We're gonna fuck it up the whole video, I guarantee. Yeah, I'm really sorry. And not, not on purpose either, because I understand that they're not trans, but yeah. it's, I know I'm gonna, I already did fuck it up. This is nonsense to me. First of all, they're in the queer trans community which means they are always concerned with people's preferred pronouns. So how can it be that you're always so concerned with misgendering and preferred pronouns? And I'm sure in their social circles, if they misgendered people, it would be a big deal. But now when it's these people on YouTube, oh, they don't care anymore. Like, they would never say this if they were doing a video about a non-binary person or if they were doing a video about a trans woman. But because it's about detransition people, they stop giving a shit. It's just so hypocritical. I already did fucked up. Uh, my name is Kiara, I'm actually 21 at the moment. Um, I never did medically transition, however I did identify as a trans guy from approximately the age of 16 to 19. It's all the same age. Were you 100% positive when you decided to start T, or did you have some doubt? I feel like they all thought they were positive and then they realized they weren't. I don't think that I would have actually gone down that route if I had been 18, gone to college, and hadn't had that easy access through my parents mm -hmm. and like our financial situation at home to be able to transition medically. Do you think that these two in the middle would pass for male yes. if they had different hair? Yes. I think so too. That's so sad. She looks just like my friend Ashley. He's a trans male. Her face reminds me of his face pre-transition. But she, she looks male to me. Yeah. Unfortunately, like so does she. Your fat distribution changes. Yeah. You. Yeah. Like especially yours. Yours changed a lot. I think for me, um, I never really was like 100% positive I wanted to start tea. Like I, I had some like really internal doubts. However, like on the surface, I was 100% like, I need to start tea now. Like. I need to start blockers, like 15, 16, I was like, do blockers even matter right now? I don't know, I just need something, and like, absolutely begging my parents to like, take me to a gender therapist, like, let's go check out the clinic, because in my hometown we had, um, a pretty, like, trans-friendly, like, children's clinic in a local hospital, and I often, like, asked, but I, uh, was shot down, I mean, with, for like good reason, um, cause like obviously I like now regret transitioning. What do you yeah. think that would feel like? I'm trying to imagine cause like I figured out I was trans when I was 13. I didn't come out, I wasn't planning on coming out till after college, um, but a friend like outed me, whatever. It worked oh, out shit. in my favor. Right. And now I'm 19 and that's like the exact age, age of them. getting it. I'm just, right. I'm trying to like think so hard. I'm like, like how would that feel? And I just, the only feeling I could relate it to is like how I felt before I started hormones and everything. It's like I damn, wonder. like they're going to feel dysphoria for like the rest of their lives. Holy I'm shit. honestly kind of confused by this. I don't really understand what he's saying. I think what he's saying is that if they're now detransitioned, they no longer identify as male, they identify as female. So if they identify as female and have male characteristics, now that is what will make them dysphoric. That's what I think he's saying, but it doesn't really make any sense to me. Holy shit, you're right. Because like, because they so much more intense than what I probably feel it as right now. Like, I've, like yeah. I've transitioned. Like I've like I've had surgery and everything. But like I, of course I still get dysphoric. Right. For people that don't know that are watching, oh, explain yeah. what what you mean. So oh. before you before you transition because you're trans. If you yeah. actually are transgender, how can you tell the difference between somebody who is and isn't really really trans in your definition? It's impossible to tell. You can't tell if hormones will make you more or less dysphoric until you try them. There's no way to tell. You actually are transgender. Yeah. And you have gender dysphoria. Calvin says it the best, right? He says if you transition and you don't have gender dysphoria, you're going to give yourself yeah. gender dysphoria. This makes complete sense to me. A lot of what dysphoria is, is obsessive thoughts and learned behaviors and specific thought patterns. So if you had a little bit of dysphoria and you 
socially transitioned, the more incongruent your body becomes with your social reality, the more those learned behaviors and obsessions are happening in your mind. So it makes complete sense to me that you can worsen your own dysphoria just by trying to transition. Most people, whether they're really trans or not, experience this. It doesn't matter what your basis for, for your transition is. It almost always gets worse in this situation. Gender dysphoria. Right. Like, if I had a penis, I'd be like, what the fuck is that? I would have dysphoria. It's not even just that. It's like, you know what? What's in your pants you could ignore throughout the day, but the thing is, like, Facial. they do not look female, female in the face. Yeah. Very unfortunate. And like, that's gonna happen. That's gonna be there forever. They might be misgendered like their whole life. Unless they get plastic. I guess you get plastic surgery. Seriously, plastic surgery? How superficial are you? Under what circumstances is it okay for someone to tell a young woman that she should have plastic surgery? This just like, disgusting that she should have to meet a standard of femininity to be accepted as a real woman. And this is the whole problem with gender ideology, is to say I feel this way and I want the world to look at me this way so I should get surgery and cosmetically change myself to be seen that way. What about she sees herself one way, she's accepted her body, she's learned to love herself, and that's enough for her. It doesn't need to all be about external validation. This whole video is just a train wreck get plastic surgery yeah maybe but not for the voice yeah. yeah i don't know that's so sad one of the reasons i want to talk about this on my channel is because the video i did with blake we talked about how it's becoming increasingly and i mean like seven to eight times more popular to transition or to come out as trans if you are assigned female at birth if you're born cis if you're not actually transgender we're talking about and you think you're trans 99 percent of the time it's actually with women one of the reasons why the number of females transitioning or identifying as trans is skyrocketing is because what used to be girls who had eating disorders and issues with sexuality and body image issues and self-esteem issues are now girls who are on the internet who can self-diagnose as dysphoric and come out as trans and then what do they do? They tell their parents and their teachers and their school and they all affirm and say yes, 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 because to, n to not do that is evil. Then they go to the doctor and say, this is how I identify, this is how I feel. And the doctor says, oh yes, let me give you hormones. At no point is anybody stopping them and really vetting them. That's what I've been noticing lately anyway. Almost everybody I know who's on hormones, there was almost no vetting process for them. And even if there is a vetting process, there's no way of distinguishing between children who have other psychological disorders with symptoms that could appear to be dysphoria and there's also children who have real dysphoria but as we know statistically the vast majority of minors with dysphoria will desist after puberty so there's no way to distinguish between these people um, and the true transsexual who will go on hormones and get surgery and be happy there's no way to distinguish and we're just affirming and giving hormones and surgery to everyone. And on children, it's literally a test because we don't know if it's going to work. There's a study out of LA that actually shows that once children are given testosterone, their breast dysphoria and bottom dysphoria actually increases. It's statistically known. And yet this clinic and every other clinic is still giving hormones to children. It's actually with women. To me, it says a lot about sexism, actually. Yeah, I was and where we're say, at. it's yeah. a lot of young girls, and they, they feel insecure in some sort of way about mm -hmm. their body or something, yep. just something about themselves, and they see, like, trans guys and how much, you know, how much happier, like, real trans guys. Again, with this real trans people thing, I know several people who transitioned, and for one year, two years, five years, they were very, very happy. It was like the perfect thing for them and then there was a crash and things changed and they were depressed and dysphoric again and realized that this had not fixed their problems so you could actually be watching somebody on youtube who will eventually detransition there is not a significant distinguishable difference between somebody who will transition and be happy and somebody who will eventually detransition
you're like real trans guys and like how right. much better their life got and their mental health got like throughout their transition they think oh maybe this will solve my problems and right they do it and it doesn't it makes everything worse and no. despite like that internal doubt i still was very gonna go about transitioning and contrary to your story like since i didn't have that support and my parents were of the camp of you know it was just like wait so you're an adult and you're out of the house so you can do whatever you like um i mean i did just that so like maybe a couple of days after my 18th birthday we went to a clinic like six hours away from where we lived and um I still got my prescription for testosterone like that day. It's like, yes, okay, it helps trans guys like get through the process faster. Like I understand that for someone who like needs to transition. All of these teenagers who are going to clinics to get hormones think that's what they need. They're all told the younger you get hormones, the better off you'll be. You need hormones. Hormones will make you less depressed. Hormones will help you with your dysphoria. They all think that's what they need when they go to get it. Nobody is going to the place to get hormones flippantly. They're told that this will fix their problems. And they believe it. It's serious. I really don't like the dismissive tone that Storm is using. Mm -hmm. But it also makes it so easy to just fall into the wrong hands. Just to get and on like, hormones like immediately. Yeah, like walk in same day like, okay, great. I'll sign this thing saying I know I'm gonna look like a man. Great, I'm gonna inject this now. I think if I had not started to um, just answer the other part of this question, I definitely would have kept on wishing for a transition. Like it was this forbidden fruit. I feel like a lot of young girls view the LGBT community as like a forbidden fruit. Yeah, they wanna be a part of something cool. Even if they're not actually gay or not actually bi or not actually trans, they'll call themselves queer. Yeah. To fit in, which I can't stand, to be honest. If you actually like someone of the same sex or the same gender, or you feel trans, you are trans. <laughs> I think that's pretty rich. If you feel trans, you are trans. Like, she just caught herself there. There is no difference between feeling trans and being trans. That's what it means to be trans. You are trans, then yeah, you're part of the, the community. But if you just dress weird, <laughs> like to me, if you dye your hair, if pink, you dye your hair, and like get your septum piercing, and like <laughs> no, you're not queer. You're straight. Like you can go to any fucking country in the world and marry your husband, and no one's gonna kill you for it. If you and Aaron were, you know, walking in Saudi Arabia, hold hands, you're gonna get killed. But <laughs> if two trans men were found holding hands in Saudi Arabia, dressed as men, they would definitely be in trouble because they would be breaking the law by impersonating men, not because they're gay, which I assume they would actually read them as lesbian because they're both females. It's so ignorant. It doesn't matter if, you know, if you're trans or not, like you're viewed as two men, yeah. you can die, yeah. Did you have doubts all along? This was a big thing for me. I think like just even from the very beginning, I had a lot of doubts and questions, not only about my own body, like in my own transition situation, but just the trans community in general. Um, I'm one of those people who mostly found it on Tumblr. A very common narrative in the queer trans community is that if you identify as trans and you have doubts about it, that's internalized transphobia. So what this actually means is the more doubts you have, the more internalized issues you have that prove that you are trans. So you're often told to just quell your doubts because it's just internalized hatred for yourself. If you go on Reddit right now and you go into some of the trans tags, I guarantee there is a couple people every day who post, oh, I'm having doubts, I'm not 100% sure about this. And everybody will say, oh, don't worry about your doubts, just move forward. Like the faster you get hormones, the sooner you'll feel better. So. This is not a fringe issue. This is a very widespread mainstream idea that's pushing children into hormones. Tumblr. I didn't hop on Tumblr until I was like already like a year into like, yes, I am trans. Like, this is it. Like, I'm here for it. And I didn't really get on like the trans side of Tumblr or like the queer side at all. Yeah. Until I, I was probably like, I don't know, like. 17. I remember seeing like random posts of like random kids talking about random genders and crap. Again, one of the reasons I want to post this is because similar to the video I did with Blake. Honestly, if I was growing up in today's world, I genuinely, and I mean this genuinely, I would probably think I was trans. I think a lot of I really young do. women with body issues yeah. would consider it oh, yeah. just in general. I hated my body. I always wore boys clothes. I played sports. 
Mm -hmm. I liked women and I wanted to be a boy because I thought that was the only way that you could like women mm, well, was being I didn't know lesbians were a thing yeah yeah and I was like I really like women and I want to date women I wish I was born a boy like I thought there was something wrong with I can't believe she feels justified in acting like these are all stupid little straight girls when she literally just explained how internalized homophobia can make you think you're trans and how that is literally what's happening right now and then she just goes on with it like all oh, these stupid straight girls. It's so, so ignorant and uncompassionate. I thought there was something wrong with me. Most of the people who end up detransitioning, they like men. Why do you think they're, that is? They're just little straight girls. That are bored. I just have to fact check him. I would say that I am acquainted with almost 200 detransitioned people. And the vast, vast, vast majority are homosexual or bisexual. And almost all of them can link their desire to transition or their disgust with their body or their disgust with their sexuality with some kind of internalized homophobia. So him saying that it's just a bunch of stupid straight girls is clouding the issue. So how can you address it? Lesbian visibility is a very important. If you don't see any lesbians that you can grow up to become and the only gender non-conforming females you've ever seen in your life are trans men, you probably will think that that's the only way to be gender non-conforming. If that's the only socially acceptable way to be a gender non-conforming female in the society that you live in, in your social circle, it makes sense that you would internalize that and become that. It just makes me really angry that so many people are going to see this video full of lies and misinformation. Bored. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad, God. It's popular right now to be oppressed and to be different because when I was growing up, it was not popular to be a lesbian. What makes her think that being a lesbian is now is socially acceptable? It's not. I barely ever met any lesbians growing up in all of these LGBTQ youth centers and events. When you go on lesbian dating apps, 80 or 90% of the women are queer or pan or bi-curious or something like that. Like, lesbians are invisible right now. And if you're growing up and you're a gender non-conforming female who's attracted to females, it makes so much sense to me that you would see being trans as the only way to fulfill your natural instinct to be gender non-conforming and be with women. This is just so unproductive. To be a lesbian. I didn't even say the word lesbian when I was growing up. I just called myself gay. I said I'm gay. Yeah, I thought lesbian was a dirty word. Yeah, yeah. It still is a dirty word. Either you're a lesbian, the kind of lesbian that makes you a turf, which is, you know, dehumanizing, or you're the good kind of lesbian that can be a porn fantasy for a trans woman. There is no way to be a lesbian without it being dirty in our society right now. Like, if you say the word lesbian to people of my parents' generation, they associate it with porn and hypersexuality. Lesbian is still a dirty word. We have a lot of work to do to make lesbianism acceptable for the next generation. Yeah, yeah, and now I'm like, I'm fucking the lesbianist lesbian. Like, literally <laughs> everything on my profile is lesbian or LGBT. I try my best to not use the word gay, because I feel like that is for gay men, you know? And I, like, for lesbian, I feel like that is an important word that we stick with. I remember actually going out and kind of trying to find mm -hmm. new accounts so early, too. It was like 2013, 2014, of people that had regret about transitioning. Mm -hmm. And so in those early years, it was mainly like, YouTube videos from trans men that like regretted a specific surgery or something or like mm -hmm. being on hormones for so long. And I took those and my negative reaction to them mm -hmm. as kind of evidence that I was, you know, really, truly transgender mm -hmm. and I was never gonna regret it and I was never going to detransition. Mm -hmm. This is why I've done this for so long and nobody understands why. Now it's coming out five years later. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it was I frankly find it disgusting how self-satisfied and vindicated she is over the fact that there's an entire generation of mostly homosexual teenagers who have permanently altered their body because they were affirmed without question in their trans identity. 
Also, I don't know why she thinks it's such a good thing when Dagny literally just said, I watched those videos and it just made me even more firm in my belief that I was trans. So what makes Ariel think that her video is going to do anything differently? Especially considering there's no, like, practical life applicable information in her video whatsoever. It's just thoughtless nonsense. Later. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it would come out eventually. Was social transition harmful to your social, psychological, and sexual development? We've known each other for a pretty long time, and I remember we would have conversations up into the late night about how we had, um, we both identified- Deep conversations. Deep conversations. Deep conversations. Um, <laughs> we both identified as gay trans men. We now know that this is, that this is not the case. <laughs> See? <laughs> They're no, right, they're always these straight. They usually fetishize gay men, like they really like gay men, like like That's they want a gay best friend, all of that. So like mm -hmm. the net, if you, you know, I don't know, the next, I don't, I guess top tier of fetishizing gay men is becoming one. Yeah. It's odd as like a gay trans man for me to like, I don't know. See people that think they're you? Yeah. There are only two differences between the women of the Peak Resilience Project who used to identify as gay trans men and Storm. And that is that Storm has had top surgery, and Storm currently identifies as a gay trans man. All of this is just within the context of time. Being smug and saying, haha, well, I'm actually a gay trans man is not at all productive. And I also think that Storm is in denial not only of the fact that they are a female who's fetishizing gay men, but also in the fact that they have a female body, which is always sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's weird because, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like looking at someone like Rin. Yeah, who I mean. identifies as, like, not a trans man, but uh, a gay trans masculine person. Mm -hmm. If they were holding hands with their boyfriend, it, it's. No. They're not gonna. You, you pass it straight. You're not gonna get punched. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's like when a bisexual is with, you know, a person of the opposite sex, they have straight passing privilege. Like, mm -hmm. people don't think they're bi. I right. think you're straight, you have a boyfriend, you're, you're, you're a girl, and yeah. yeah, they assume you're straight. I think what, what they experienced, these two people, these two women, and what you're saying, you know, how they're fetishizing gay trans. Just to be clear, I don't think anybody is fetishizing gay trans men, they're fetishizing gay men. Um, I believe that a lot of females who identify as trans, it's a kind of escape from being female because the reality of what's expected of them based on porn, for example, is so horrifying they can't really contemplate that so they want to be males to give them agency within their relationships or agency over their body if someone's subconscious mind is doing this much gymnastics to try and make them feel safe and okay it's a serious issue that needs to be explored critically in my opinion fetishizing gay trans men is what happens with a lot of older so-called trans women I can't believe this needs to be said, but the social and environmental factors that lead adult males to fetishize lesbians and lesbian sex specifically are completely, completely different than the social and environmental factors that lead young teenage females to fetishize and idolize gay men and gay relationships. I can't believe this needs to be said. Trans women, and I say that in quotes because I don't think they're actually trans women. They never transition. You think they fetishize lesbians? I do. Autogynophila, -gynoph it's when a man who is not trans gets turned on by the idea of him being a woman. So again, I can't believe she considers herself to be an educator and she can't even read the freaking Wikipedia page about this. But Ray Blanchard, who did like the defining study about what is transsexuality, studied a huge amount of transsexual males, so male to female transsexuals, and tried to pathologize the base of their dysphoria, and he found that most of them fell into two categories, the homosexual transsexual and the autogynophilic. So the homosexual transsexual is a someone who's born male, who's attracted to males, who typically is just so feminine that they kind of fit in as a woman when they transition naturally. Um, and then there's the autogynophilic, who they were sexually aroused at the idea of themselves being female, which could be attached to their dysphoria or could cause them dysphoria. But it's literally one of the types of transsexuals, so to say that they're not trans doesn't make any sense. 
a woman and is still attracted to women. So yeah, he goes yeah. after lesbians, but he's not trans. He doesn't have gender dysphoria, yeah. but they'll call themselves women because it sexually turns them on, which mm -hmm. is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I do think there's something wrong with going after lesbians because you're a fucking man. Like you're not a trans woman, you're a man that likes to dress up, which is fine. Yeah. But don't expect lesbians to like that. Um, we had these deep conversations about our um, compulsory heterosexuality not even because, we, because we had crushes on girls in middle school and how since we're trans men, and we've always been men, despite not knowing it. Um, the societal pressure on us to like girls <laughs> made us like girls in middle school. I imagine we really experienced this as well, thinking that if I was attracted to females, that would be compulsory heterosexuality. So I actually thought the fact that I wanted to be with a man while I was a teenager and identifying as trans made me even more gay. So... In their case, and in the case of a lot of trans-identified females, what you have is a female homosexual who's basically deconstructing their homosexuality and programming themselves to be straight while they think they're doing the opposite. It's extremely fucked up. Imagine growing up thinking that you're a trans guy. I guess that would be like Calvin, right? Yeah. They thought he knew he, knew he was a trans guy, yeah. but he liked women. But until he transitioned, he didn't feel comfortable with the idea of liking women. I Which, again, makes complete sense. If you have internalized homophobia and the idea of being with a woman as a female upsets you, then once you transition and your physical denial of your body is more complete, and you now literally see yourself as a male with a female, it makes sense that you wouldn't have as much problem with that because it's not homosexual sex to you in your mind anymore. So it's based in internalized homophobia. The idea of liking women, I think, because then he'd be seen as lesbian and he didn't identify as a woman, so that'd be weird. That's like a lot yeah. of unpacking that somebody has to do. Yeah, and we were teenagers and we tried to do that unpacking. Now think about a six or seven year old who identifies as trans. Are they capable of doing the unpacking that we've done in retrospect now? No. So much emphasis on like what I looked like that I couldn't even exist as a person, which therefore harmed my social development because it got really hard to like make friends or like want to go out or like do anything because my whole headspace was devoted to like constantly managing like my presence in any social situation. They're, they're not talking about um, micro genders, which is what you're talking about, which oh. is when people have the weird neo pronouns like tree self, tree them, or some <laughs> crap like that. Like, like I think I'm a cactus. <laughs> There's some bread gender. I don't know what? what it's called, but it's basically like, I'm bread. I think what she was saying is that, like, because I was trans, I was trying to be very quirky. I thought it was okay to be like super quirky. And she was talking about how like she like dressed like super weird and she couldn't make friends because she, she just looked weird. I'm so confused. Is this person actually trans? Do they not know? Like, when you start to present as trans, you have to monitor all of your mannerisms. You have to monitor every word that comes out of your mouth. You have to monitor how you walk. You have to monitor how you put your hands in your pockets. You have to monitor everything about yourself so that you're always passing. Before you leave home, you need to try on your clothes. You need to look in the mirror. You need to make sure everything is as flat as possible. You're constantly micro-analyzing everything you're doing. I don't understand how this person didn't catch on. That's what that's what Jesse was talking about. That's obviously what Jesse was talking about. And then they're just dismissing it as, oh, some stupid girl. It's really regressive and unproductive, their commentary on this video. Yeah. I grew up um, just like with a lot of like trauma and I have like certain like mental health issues. What did I say? Why the fuck upon hearing the news that people are transitioning as a result of trauma is she fucking smiling? Why is she smiling? This is not funny. This is not happy. This is... Why is she smiling? So many of these women transition or think that they need to transition because they have mental health issues or they have trauma or they were abused sexually. Maybe it does help, but that doesn't mean that they're trans. I'm guessing that Ariel is completely unaware of the fact that there is a huge portion of the trans community who come from abusive homes as children or who were sexually abused as children, like a huge percentage. I don't want to guess at a number, but it's definitely more than 10 or 20 percent. It's a huge number of people who have issues with abuse end up transitioning. If you want to use that as a gotcha on them, you have to use it as a gotcha on every other trans person. I bet about half the trans people you know are in a similar situation. Um, 
ignorance and arrogance is astounding. Trans, but maybe it does help like dissociating from the body that you were you were raped in, but that still doesn't make them trans. Both socially and then later medically became this way to like inject positive change into my life. So I just know, I remember when I made a lot of friends in the trans community. I mean, my hair was just cut to here. Like, actually, no, my hair was very long and I like wore it in a ponytail and flipped it. Like, I don't know, I made it look like I had short hair. I like put a hat on and crap, but okay. um, I just remember like, I made a bunch of friends in the trans community when someone would like, oh, finally get the first binder, everyone made a really big deal out of it. Or like, someone finally got to cut their hair, everyone made a really big deal out of it. Mm. Cause like, everyone was like around my age, so we, you know, couldn't transition yet. Right, right. You know, once I started testosterone, everyone made a big deal about it. You know, the month updates, every it was right. fun in the beginning cause everyone made a big deal about yeah, it. Yeah. Then it just got like exhausting. Mainly because I realized like, oh, this is just something that should have happened. It's really not a big deal. Yeah. Same with my top surgery. Like a lot of people made a big deal about it. And like, yeah, it's like awesome. It's like really cool. I got to do that at like 17. But it's also like, oh, this is just something that was Made supposed, to happen. Yeah. So what they're saying is it shouldn't be glorified, but it should be normalized. That's really splitting hairs, dude. Especially when at the beginning of the video, you said anybody who wants hormones is getting hormones. And this is your opinion. Ugh. To happen. Yeah. Yeah. It was, that happen. should have, that should have been all along. When she says positive changes, to me, what I first thought of is Blake and I talked about this in our video. As soon as he started to transition, he realized he became more popular. He became more well liked. Yes. Yeah, being trans does make you more popular. But I'm pretty sure that what she actually was saying was that you would create these milestones of accomplishing things for being trans, and you would accomplish them, and you would feel like a false sense of accomplishment and a false sense of agency when you're really standing in the same place doing the same thing but you would feel like you're moving forward with your life so you would inject change into your life that was synthetic that's what i think she was talking about but the popularity thing is also true more well liked yes people don't want to say this but the truth is it is much easier for the most part not in every situation obviously men experience a lot of stress too yeah but in general it is easier being a man it's really pathetic how many caveats she had to state before she could actually say it's easier to be a man than to be a woman. Like, fucking yes. Obviously. Easier being a man in society. In most of the world. In most situations. Not all situations, of yeah. course. Didn't they say they thought they liked women? Or I think at least yeah. these two on the right, on to the two on the, end, on the ends, they look like lesbians to me. They never said their end thing, but I think yeah. they like men. Literally, all of the women on that panel are lesbian or bisexual. You can find this out extremely easily by opening their fucking Twitters. It says on their Twitters, Helena and Jesse are dating each other. They're both females. That's a lesbian relationship. I can't believe they're, oh, these stupid straight girls. Like, just open Twitter, man. Literally, that's it. Think yeah. They like men. Yeah, and the two on the ends, I feel like in their head, they probably were like, well, society, I feel like I'm gonna be less accepted as a lesbian, but if I'm a straight guy, everybody's gonna accept me. Ariel herself said that when she was a child, her conception of sexuality made more sense to her uh, as her being a man with a woman because she was attracted to women, but it took her a few years to figure that out, obviously. Why is it that for these girls you think they made a conscious decision, but for you it took you a long time to figure it out? It's obviously a very similar situation. Um, the denial is just ridiculous. It feels like I wasn't progressing as a person at all in any sense that I could think of. <laughs> like literally all of my interests were put on hold. The reason you're not progressing as a person is because, is because that's not who you are as a person. You don't have dysphoria. Who the hell are you, Ariel, to decide who does and doesn't have dysphoria? is ridiculous. These women experienced dysphoria firsthand, and most of them were professionally diagnosed as having gender dysphoria. Meanwhile, Ariel, I bet, can't even give a concise definition of what dysphoria entails. Also, what the hell is this, of course you didn't progress as a person? That's implying that every trans person that transitions, their life is automatically better and things are easier for them. That is not true. If you look at the studies, People post-HRT and post-SRS have the same rates of mental health issues and the same rates of suicide as people pre-transition and pre-HRT. This whole idea of if you were a true transsexual it would have helped you is so, so harmful because it doesn't work that way. It's a lie. 
don't have dysphoria, your brain and your body match up, it's just that you're not happy with your body. Not also, this entire concept of a transgender person is somebody who has the wrong brain for their body, as in a male-bodied person has a female brain, or a female-bodied person has a male brain, is complete science fiction. That's not... Nobody has found that that's a fact. First of all, brain sex is not really a thing. There are characteristics that are associated with a female brain or characteristics that are associated with the male brain that develop through neuroplasticity. That doesn't mean that there is a female brain, a male brain. There isn't a sharp distinction like that. The studies that these people cite have shown that a homosexual transsexual has some brain characteristics that are typical of females even though they are males. Some, and some characteristics. It doesn't mean they literally have a female brain and a male body. People have misread this study purposefully and then just spread the information like wildfire without doing any real research. Also to assume that every single trans person literally has a different brain is ridiculous. If it was a tangible thing, you could do a blood test or do a brain scan, but it's not because it's a trend to do with specific aspects. It's not literally a male brain and a female body. It pisses me off that people think, oh, they have a male brain. If they go on male hormones, everything will be better for them because their body will work more naturally. No, this is science fiction with your body not because you want a male body you know you don't want big tits or you don't want small tits i hated the, the fact that my boobs were so small but that didn't mean that i wanted a flat chest mm -hmm. like a male chest it just means i wanted bigger boobs or some women that have big boobs want medium-sized boobs yeah, breast reduction yeah like that doesn't make you trans what ariel is describing here is body dysmorphia the women in this video know the difference between sex dysphoria and body dysmorphia stop patronizing them second of all I'm pretty sure most girls know that if their boobs are too small and they want bigger boobs, that doesn't make them trans. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. And lastly, in the radical queer community, what passes as dysphoria, the qualifications are very low. So somebody with body dysmorphia could infer that they have dysphoria or be told that they have dysphoria or be diagnosed with dysphoria. Even if I or they can make a distinction between dysphoria and dysmorphia, there's no functional difference in the queer community. In my head, when I started making videos about trans issues, 2013, 2014, I feel like these are the exact people that would hate on my videos. Like if I pictured them in my head, right. these are the women that hate, that thought they were trans or non-binary. This is what they would look like in my yeah. head. Like red hair, pink hair, dreads. Just as a note, Jessie has dreads now, but when she identified as trans, she had a shaved head and looked like a boy. And Helena has pink hair now, but when she was trans, she had really short hair and she passed as a boy. I also had short hair and passed as a boy, but my hair was colorful. I must have been a trender and not had real dysphoria. Dreads. They thought they were trans and then this person is a little bit butch and then I like said that butch lesbians and trans men are kind of similar looking sometimes if they're pre-t. Yeah. Which they are. And the whole point of making that video was say there is still a difference. Yeah. Because someone people, identifies as a man. People would look at your thumbnail and they never watched the video. I remember That's what that. it is. I feel like these are the people that we'd be offended at that years ago. I don't know why she's all like, oh, haha, ha, they used to be really radical trans activists. Like... Yes, they used to be very deeply into the queer community and they used to consider themselves activists. Yes, that just shows how much of their life trans ideology took over and it shows how invested they were in becoming the person that they wanted to become. I don't know why that somehow vindicates her. Years ago. Yeah, I literally remember having you explain my friends like she's helping us. Yeah, I'm making you look <laughs> legitimate even yeah. if you're not on T. Like you're still a trans guy. Yeah. I now realize like I denied it before. I um, didn't want to come to terms with the fact that I was like gay. Like I wasn't rather be a straight man. <gasps> Did you hear that? That's the, literally the exact thing. That's said. literally the exact same thing I said. And I swear to God, I haven't watched this video. Again, the fact that she's sensationalizing this horrific phenomena is just unbelievable to me. I can't believe she's excited about this. This video, not up to this <laughs> point. I watched the first like minute of it just to figure out if it would be good to react to. Mm -hmm. That's literally what I said five minutes ago. I knew that these people, at least the lesbians, thought it would be easier to live as a straight guy than a lesbian. That was a big part of it. That definitely put like, my, 
I'd be able to accept myself and my sexual like orientation for what it is. Like, that was normal for sure. Holy shit. Not, yeah, not even, I thought she was just talking about like socially, not like mentally. That's sad. That's very sad. That's really sad. I knew that was gonna happen in this video. Yes, it's really, really, really fucking sad. I don't know why she keeps saying that detransitioned women are all straight girls when most of the time, in my opinion, it's a lesbian who has such internalized homophobia that they can't confront the fact that they are a female who's attracted to other females. What you're describing, somebody who has so much messed up stuff in their head that they, they physically can't conceptualize of themselves as a female, yes, that's the situation we're in. So stop belittling it. Everybody yeah, in terms of pros and cons, you know, I have to add some of it. Um, cons, like, it isolated me a lot from, like, friends and family. A lot of people used to get on my case, especially assholes like Chase, about not including feminine trans guys because I thought they weren't actually trans, not because they were feminine trans. You're a feminine trans guy, like. Yeah. But it's because I genuinely thought that those people weren't trans and that they were like this, that they just thought they wanted to live as straight men because it was easier. None of the women in that video are particularly feminine, so I don't know what she's talking about. Like this, that they just thought they wanted to live as straight men because it was easier than being a, a woman that likes women, which it is. I'm not gonna say that it isn't. It definitely is. I wish I was a straight guy that just could fuck girls all day and like not have to worry about, you know, like yeah. if my marriage rights are gonna be like, you know, taken away, taken away by <laughs> Trump and shit. And I remember people like Chase and Cat Black and even Riley at this point get on my case for not including people like them in the videos. Just three people I've muted on Twitter. P three people that I, <laughs> that I fucking hate. But it's because I feel like they're not genuinely good representation for your community. I I wouldn't want to put this person that thought they were trans on the channel, make the trans community look bad because they were confused. Here are the reasons that detransition people make the trans community look bad. One, we prove the point that it's a lie that transition will cure your dysphoria. There is no cure for dysphoria. Second, we prove the point that dysphoria can dissipate and change over time and it's not permanent, so maybe it doesn't need a permanent solution. And three, we prove the point that you can survive dysphoria with psychotherapy and counseling and peer support and not transition, which is the opposite of the trans narrative of transition or you'll commit suicide and die. So yeah, we make the trans community look bad because we were sold a lie and followed the path that the lie set out for us and it didn't work. That's us making them look bad because we're pointing out the flaws in their ideology and the flaws in their medicine. We're confused. Then they're gonna think you're all confused. I don't know, I'm not very fond of them is because they push being trans like it's an agenda. Okay, but it literally is. For example, in sex ed, at very young ages, like under the age of 10, they're explaining to children that they can choose their gender. And as a result, the rates of school children who identify as trans have skyrocketed. There's some schools in British Columbia, Canada, where I think 2% of the population identify as trans. Another thing is parents taking their children to gender clinics. They definitely have an agenda. You can read news articles about parents who have gay children who take them to trans clinics to trans them, to fix them so that they look heterosexual. The doctors themselves and the therapists themselves might not have an agenda, but the medical companies that are making so much money off of hormones right now definitely have an agenda. Also something that's not talked about a lot is plastic surgeons and sexual reassignment surgery. Every couple of months, there's a new story about a surgeon who literally didn't know what they were doing and botched a surgery because somebody asked for SRS. Also, there are so many stories of people who get sexual reassignment surgery who saw one doctor for one appointment and then went to get the surgery and later they were very dissatisfied or upset with the results because the plastic surgeon didn't really have any particular training in that area or didn't take pride in their work or for whatever reason, the results were very bad because the plastic surgeon was incompetent. These plastic surgeons are almost never taken to court or almost never face professional consequences. So yes, they definitely have an agenda of just saying, oh, come, come, I'll give you plastic surgery and they make a lot of money off of it. When you tell impressionable teens that their suffering can be fixed by this thing, you're basically pushing an agenda because they will do anything to escape their suffering. If you give them only one option, you're forcing them into that option. We were never given an alternative 
to handling our dysphoria, to living with our dysphoria. We are now the living proof that there are alternate ways to survive with dysphoria. An agenda. Like, you know, people joke about, like, the gay agenda. It's like, true. I truly believe, like, people are pushing this trans agenda oh, onto, 100%. Onto, like, vulnerable kids. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say, I've only been detransitioned for, like, a year, and, like, in the past year, I feel like I've done pretty much everything I wanted to do for the last, like, four years, but in the span of a year. Like, yeah. created so much more art, I've been, like, way more open with, like, my self-expression, like, I've traveled, I've made so many great friends, like, Sure. Career developments, I've been planning like things I want to do in my life in the future. It's just like really cool. Like before they figured out who they were, they were obsessed with transitioning because they thought that that would help them figure out who they were. But now that they realize that's not who they are and they detransition, now they can focus on who they are. This implies that for true transsexuals, if they focus and obsess on their transition and who they really are, that their life will get better. This is not a known fact. Who they are. Yeah. Whereas for you, it would be the opposite. Yeah, I couldn't do crap. You couldn't do shit beforehand. Yeah, and then once I started testosterone. You were like, oh, now I feel shit. fucking normal. Yeah, like a yeah. boyfriend. So. Yeah. That's how they all felt. That's how I felt. That's why we transitioned. We all couldn't do shit with our lives and we thought transition would make it easier. For some people, it did make it easier. Like for you, Storm. For some detransition people, it made it easier for two years, five years, and then they hit a wall of depression. You're selling lies. It's just never healthy to have one thing, like, no matter what it is, like, your soul focus. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, it's just, that's the reality of it. So, like, what are your final thoughts on this? This um, is exactly what I thought it was going to be, which makes me so happy. Yeah. I've been saying this for literal years. Yeah. For the last time, why is Arielle happy she's being proven right when, in order to be proven correct, a bunch of people had to suffer. Yeah, their mindset goes one of two ways. Uh, either like this. Oh yeah, where I like I'm, this point. I'm very thankful that these women like said all of this and gave us this information. Like I'm, I'm very thankful for them making this video. So if any of you are watching, like thank you so much. Seriously, you called them confused, stupid little straight girls for the entire video. You belittled their experience and dismissed their wisdom as dumb teenage girls. And now you're like, oh, thanks for making the video. You're so disrespectful. Thank you so much. And two, if they're not like this, they're just like, they don't believe trans is real. I don't think that's what they think. Yeah, no, no, no. I they definitely, they're yeah. just, they're basically saying like, like I fucked yeah, up. Like, Fuck up and make a mistake. They were sold a lie. They had body image issues. They had sexuality issues. They went online and found the queer community. And they found out what dysphoria is. And they found out what trans people are. And they thought, oh my gosh, that's me. And then they were completely validated at every single step by people online, by therapists, by doctors. Everyone said, yes, this is correct. Yes, you should take hormones. Yes, you should take testosterone. They didn't make a mistake. All of the professionals who did nothing to intervene, who did nothing to slow them down, they are the ones who made the mistake. The community who tells kids that if you have dysphoria, you must transition or you will die, they are the ones who made the mistake. They were sold a lie. They didn't make a mistake. Like I fucked yeah, up. Like Fuck yeah. it, like, I fucked up. Yeah. Whatever. But, Which is why I respect them. I'm yeah, not- this is not I a hate video yeah, at all, by yeah. the way. I hopefully people don't think I'm hating on them. I'm hating on the fact that this has to happen because of all the trans people pushing the trans agenda. Storm literally said he doesn't like them because they act as if there is a trans agenda and then you are acknowledging the trans agenda. Doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. That people like them are thinking that they need to transition just to be accepted in society or to accept their bodies or to accept their sexual orientation, which is fucking wild. But Why does Ariel think people transition? So that if they identify as a female, their body physically fits into society as a female. So that if they identify as a heterosexual male, their body looks male so they can act as much as possible as a heterosexual male. That's the whole freaking point of transition, to fit into society, to fit into your sexuality the way you want to. What are you talking about, Ariel? Wild. What would your advice be to women that are watching this channel that think that they're trans? She's making it sound like there's a bunch of girls who've just decided to be trans. If you currently think you're trans, this message is not getting to you because you think it's for the other people, which is the whole problem with this debate. You can't just say they were never trans, they're other people, they're different than us, because then you can't reflect on it yourself. Just pushing them away and saying they're different than you does not solve any problems. Who the hell is this message for? It doesn't make any sense. 
trans. I can't even say go see a gender therapist yeah, because yeah. like yeah, they might be too young. Well, no, not even that. Not just that. like gender therapists, like they'll just go and be like, just do whatever you want. Here you go. Here's yeah, testosterone. Like, here's fucking testosterone. I don't even know what advice to give. Like that sounds my, so weird. But it's no, just no, it's like, okay. I knew I was trans. Like I knew I was a male. Storm, we're no different than you. We also just knew one day that we were trans. And by the way, you can't just be male because you feel like it. Your body has XX or XY chromosomes. Male is not a feeling. Female is not a feeling. It's just a physical reality. When people ask me like, do you have any advice for coming out or advice for knowing something about dysphoria? I'm like, I don't know. It's just- You just I, knew. They are part of the fucking problem. If the only qualification for being trans is, I just knew, there's no diagnostic criteria for anyone to meet, then anyone can just wake up and say they feel trans and they must be validated. This is all part of the same problem. They are putting literally no thought into what they're saying or what they're doing. I just knew. Like I just knew. I just knew I was a woman that liked women. How do you know? I don't know. I just knew. And it had nothing to do with getting validation from society. And I think that's a huge part of you know the difference between actually being trans or actually being gay and being a straight girl that wants validation that wants to have an easier life. So first of all, none of the Peak Resilience Project girls are straight. They're all bi or lesbian. Also, if there really are straight girls who are fetishizing gay relationships and gay men, they don't want life to be easier. They're fetishizing being oppressed, which you like said in the video. I don't know how you forgot that. And also, yeah, everything is about external validation. There's a thought experiment that I recommend to people who identify as trans. Imagine you're on a desert island by yourself and you're never gonna see another human being again. Do you still feel that you need transition? Do you think your dysphoria would be as bad if there was no one there to witness you living as the sex you were born as? Obviously this is not diagnostic or anything, but just a way to reflect on how your dysphoria is influenced by society and the interpretation of the people around you of who you are. Your life or wants to be viewed differently in some way. It's not about the way people view you, it's about the way you view yourself, which is why it's called self-love. Love yourself, don't feel that you need to transition to do that unless you actually have gender dysphoria like Ryan does. So, be yourself, love yourself, unless you're trans and you hate your body, then hating your body is a good thing and you deserve to get surgery. You can't have it both ways, man. Either you love the body you're in and you learn to accept it, or you hate it. Transition is the act of literally removing parts of your body and adding parts to change your body. That's not self-love. That's a deconstruction of the self to create a new person. There's a little bit more of the video, but it's just them promoting their stuff and telling you where to find them on social media. So, my overall take on this video is that they are uninformed, their opinions and random assumptions are useless and their attitude towards detransitioners is very disrespectful despite them saying that we're important if you are detransitioned yourself or if you're questioning whether or not you should detransition feel free to message me on any social media I can't be here to talk to everyone through everything, but I can definitely put you in contact with a community of detransitioners. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me financially through Patreon, PayPal, or Ko-Fi, or Coffee, I guess. Please like, subscribe, and comment. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm so I can be seen more. And I put a ton of facts and studies and links to articles in the description about the information that I'm sharing. If you made it this far in the video, wow, you must really like me. Thanks for watching. Bye.